Every year, a lady friend of mine, Mrs. Baroni, who is a good 78, has been telling the story of Epiphany on Epiphany Eve to several generations of Baronis. They're all American citizens in her family, but the old lady was born in Florence, and she tells the tale exactly as her grandmother told it. In case your grandmother wasn't born in Italy, I thought you might be interested. Here it is. The woman looked up from her work. There was so much work to do in the house, but she put down her brush. There were some people in the road, out there by the well. She washed her hands and folded the towel and put it back in its place, and then she opened the door, sighing as she thought of what she'd left behind undone. She went out into the road. She could hear the children chattering and giggling. The little monkeys, she thought. Their mothers should teach them better manners. Standing apart from the children at the well, the mothers, their arms folded, their heads tipped toward each other, were gossiping quietly, staring at the queer, grand-looking foreigners who had stopped at the village for water. The woman was old, but she walked proudly. Her neighbors were afraid of the strange men, and she was not. They were holy men, and the woman had no fear of them because she was certain that she was as godly and good as any foreigner. The woman's name was Bethana, and she was hated in her village. She would not suffer the children to play in her courtyard or in her fields, and she never gave them candies or sweets. The mothers of the children hated her because she said more prayers than is comfortable for ordinary women, and the men might well have hated her because she owned the land on which most of them worked, but in fact, she was disliked by them because she was ill-favored, and most of all, because she was lonely. Bethana moved to the well through the crowd of her neighbors, and the smallest of the children made way for her to pass. She was happy. Her neighbors were jealous. There was not one among them who would dare to speak to these alien men. You must have come a great way, she heard herself saying. You are holy men, and so it is proper that I ask you to rest in my house tonight. We cannot rest, said the gravest of the elders. A lean, gray-bearded man with a look in his pale eyes he will find in the mariner and in the philosopher's eyes. The look of gazing far and hard at the horizon. The sun is almost down and we travel only by night, he told her. But you are men of God. Why then do you wait for darkness, she said. Who searches for you? It is we who search, they told her. We wait for the darkness that we may find our way. I am an old woman, said Bethana, and now you are making fun of me. We are speaking the truth, said the eldest. Bethana looked into his pale, clear eyes. Her heart was troubled, and although she could not tell why it was so, she felt her spirit lighten. She was old and ugly, but she felt now as only the beautiful feel when they are very young. The sun was low and red. The women of the village moved away, returning to their kitchens, the children with them. A silence rose out of the dusk, and even the dogs stopped barking in the fields. The strangers stood together, holding a single gaze, unblinking and very serious. What are you looking for? Bethana whispered. The eldest finally made answer. We have come to a great door, he said. A key has been given us to that door. The worship of God is my life, cried Bethana. Show me your key. And now the strangers fell to their knees. She observed that their heads were not bent in prayer, but raised as heads are raised to listen and to watch. The sun was gone. Bethana saw that they were looking at a star. Behold, they said, there is the keyhole. The wise men rose and went to their dromedaries. The star is your sign, said Bethana. Where is it leading you? To the king of heaven, said Jasper of Taurus, king of the land of Mer. To the son of God, said Melchior, king of Arabia, rich in gold. 
to the savior of the world, said Balthazar of Saba, where the frank incense flows from the trees. I will go with you, said Bethana to the three kings. But even as she spoke, she thought of her house, of the work undone, of the door unbolted. I will go to my house and then I will come with you. And they said to her, we cannot wait for you. The woman hurried to her house. I must bring the child a gift, she thought, and went to the place where she kept secretly her sweet things and filled a bag with them. When she returned to the well, the strangers had gone away. The star marked a path across the fields and plains, and the path was empty. The wise men had followed the star over the rim of the world. They were beyond the horizon now, hastening to Bethlehem. The night was very still. She listened hard with her old ears, and she heard nothing. Looking, listening, she stood there, her old heart heavy with dread, and then heard a sound, but it was not the three wise men returning for her. It was running feet barefoot. It was a child who lived in a small farm nearby. His father was her tenant. As the child came to the well, she spoke to him, and by the light of the star, she could see the hate in his small face. He turned away and ran toward home across the fields. She called out to him. She called again. Because he knew that Bethana was to be feared, he stopped. She crossed the open place to where he stood. She had been holding the candies to her breast, but now she gave the candies to the child, and it was the first Christmas present. It was also the first gift Bethana had ever made. That was 2,000 years ago, and she has been giving presents to little children ever since. Or so the story goes. That's just the way I heard it from old grandmother Baroni. The word Bethana, or Bethanius, it's just an Italian way of saying epiphany. And after the kings had brought their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh to the stable in Bethlehem, they gave their riches to the poor and afterwards lived only to preach the gospel of peace on earth and the tidings of great joy which shall be to all men. They were martyrs to their faith and the three buried together. Their bones were moved many times to Constantinople, to Milan, that was during the First Crusade, and later northward again to the city of Cologne. The church burned to the ground, but their bones were saved. And when the new cathedral was built, its gold heart was a shrine to the sacred relics of the three wise travelers. Well, now one of Mrs. Baroni's grandchildren fought for peace on earth at the very gates of the city of Cologne last year, and after he took the city... He didn't forget to go to the cathedral. And I heard from old Mrs. Baroni that he wrote her a letter back home telling about how he'd visited in Germany the tomb of the three wise men of the East. He didn't forget his grandmother's story. His little brothers and sisters heard it last night. They all hung up their stockings, and I hope this morning that they found that Bethana had remembered them. As the story goes, the people of Bethana's village never saw her again because she started off that night on a long journey. She went searching for the child Jesus, whose name is another word for truth. And like so many of us, she's never found him. <laughs> 